this tutorial video, we're going to create a raindrop effect. If you'll remember, last week we went over the effect of how to make a surface look wet. This week we're going to create some raindrops. And then in the following weeks, we're going to create several other wetness and rain effects. And then finally, uh, we're going to string them all together uh, to show you how to create a, a complete rain wetness system. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to start out today using this texture. This is our raindrop texture, and you can see that um, I've got right now the red and green channels displayed. This is for our drops. This is what's going to create the normal of our drops. And then in the blue channel, I have this mask, which is a temporal offset. And this, this mask uh, makes each of the drops appear at a slightly different time. And then finally, in the alpha channel, I have this mask. The small black dots represent drops that I want to be static. And the larger white dots represent drops that I want to be animated on the surface. If we look at our reference again, you can see that uh, some of these drops are static. And when a drop hits, uh, it's a little bit animated. There's some movement to it. So that's the effect that we're going to be going for. So this is the texture that we're going to use. Let's switch over here to uh, our shader. And the first thing that we need is some UV coordinates for this. So I'm going to type uh, UV. There we go. Texture coordinate. And I'm going to multiply these by three uh, just so we get something that's a little bit larger. So I'm going to multiply the UV coordinates by three. And then I'm going to plug something in. And I said a little bit larger, but what I really meant was so that the, the texture will tile a little bit more. Okay, if I just plug this into the base color of the shader, we're going to get something that's really weird. And so what I need to do is unpack this texture, uh, create a normal, uh, and use the other masks in the, the correct way. The first thing that I'm going to do is create my normal. So I'm going to put down an append vector node. And I'm going to put together my red channel and my green channel. And this is eventually going to be my normal, uh, but not quite yet. The first thing that I need to do is multiply by 2 and subtract 1. When my normal is in the texture, um, it's from a range in a range of 0 to 1. Um, but a normal is actually in a range of negative 1 to 1. So when I multiply by 2 and then subtract 1, what that's doing is expanding out the data that's been compressed into the texture and converting it from the texture into a normal. So I'm going to multiply by 2 and subtract 1. All right, so that's a pretty good normal, except for one last thing. This is just a red and a green. And I need a three channel, so I'm going to put down another append. And in this case, I'm just going to append a constant vector of one. All right, let's see what I get if I pass this into my normal. So I'm just going to break off this base color here. And I should get, yeah, so you can see I've got these nice drops on the surface now. That's already starting to come together. Really cool. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is um, pull out my masks. And my masks are stored in the alpha channel. Just like I did up here where I unpacked my normal, I also need to unpack my masks. So I'm going to add a multiply. I'm going to multiply by 2 and subtract one again. And then I'm going to saturate this, which means clamp it between zero and one. And this is going to be my animated mask. So in order to do the animation, I'm going to need a time node. And 
I'm going to multiply time by a, a constant value of 0.7, uh, just so I can get the right speed for my drops. So I'm going to add a value here of 0.7, and there's my time. And then I'm going to take this blue channel, and I'm going to subtract my time. And I'll show you what the result of this is going to look like. So here's my blue channel. Remember I said that was my temporal offset mask. And I'm going to subtract my time here. And then I'm going to do a frac, which gives me just the, the decimal portion. What happens here is here's my time. And if I subtract time from this value, it's just going to keep on getting lower and lower and lower. So as time increases, I'm going to be subtracting more and more and more and more. But if I put a frac on here, what this is going to do is throw away the part of the number that's on the right side of the decimal and just keep uh, what's less than one. And this is going to basically uh, do a continuous loop um, between zero and one. So let's plug this into the base color and I'm going to disconnect the normal here just so we can see what's going on. All right, you can see here that I've got this mask here that's kind of speckly because my blue channel has all these values that are just slightly different grayscale values. I'm getting this, the result is this mask that like slowly animates and flashes the various values. And I'm going to use this to animate the, the larger drops. All right, so I'm gonna take my time mask here I'm just going to move it up into place, and then I'm going to multiply it by my animated drop mask that I've got here. And then let's take a look what I get as a result. I'm just going to plug this into base color. Okay, so you can see that my larger drops now have a mask, and the mask is animated. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if I take this and I multiply it by my normal, so remember these nodes up here at the top are my normal, and I'm multiplying that by my animated mask and then appending my one vector. I'll just disconnect this base color here and wire this into my normal again. Now let's see what we get. All right, so now I've got some nice animated raindrops. You can see how they start out big and then they kind of soak into the surface, which is exactly the effect that I'm going for. So pretty cool. All right, now the next thing that I wanna do is add in my static raindrops. So I'm gonna add a, a multiply node and I'm gonna multiply so if you'll remember, uh, my static raindrops are these little black uh, spots here. And what I want to do is invert this so everything that's gray and everything that's white becomes black. And everything that's black becomes white. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to multiply by a constant value of negative 1. And let's see what I get from this. I'm going to disconnect my normal again and plug this into the base color just so you can see what the result of this mask is. Now, I want to give you the opportunity to um, help me troubleshoot this a little bit. There's something here that I don't understand. If I have um, these, these smaller drops um, in my mask that are black, and I multiply two and subtract one, these smaller drops that are black should become white, the gray should become black, and the black areas should become negative one. So doing this should make these drops white and everything else black. But the result that I get is as if my range is from zero to one instead of negative one. And I don't really understand why that's happening. I can get around the, the, the issue if I add a power node and just raise it to a power of like 10. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this case. But if you can see what I'm doing wrong here and you can tell me, I'd really appreciate it if you could post that in the comments 
down below because it'd be nice if we could make this a little bit more um, a little bit more efficient and not have to use this power node. All right, so finally I'm just going to saturate this. And then I'm going to take this mask and I'm going to add it. So this is my static drops mask. And this is my animated drops mask. And I'm just going to add the two of those together. And then this is going to give me my final... Uh, my final mask previously I just had the result of my animated mask plugged into my normal but now I'm gonna take the result of my animated mask and my static mask and I'm gonna plug that into my normal and let's see what that gives us all right so now you can see I have some animated drops and I also have some static drops and that looks pretty cool. I'm liking what I've got so far. I'm almost done. There's just a couple of more little touches that I want to add. Uh, so let's clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to move my uh, normal nodes over here. Uh, my static mask here. Or rather, my animated mask here. I'm going to move my static mask over here. Okay, so we're adding those two together. And the last thing that I want to do is create one more mask um, that has to do with the direction that the object is facing. Right now you can see that this thing has these raindrops all over it. But honestly, that doesn't really make sense because raindrops come from the sky. And so why would raindrops be showing up on the bottom of this thing? Well, they shouldn't be. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a vertex normal and you'll, you'll notice that this is vertex normal WS, which means it's in world space. And then I'm gonna add a component mask because I just want the Z component of this thing. Um, because if you'll remember, Unreal is Z up, which means the Z part of the world space uh, vertex normal is the up direction. And I'm gonna saturate this guy And then for one more control, I'm gonna add another multiply. And this control here is gonna be um, the, the control that I can use for if it's raining or not. So here I've got a value of zero. I'm just gonna change this to one. And when I multiply this guy in here, this, this can control, you know, is it raining or is it not raining? And then I'm going to wire this here, and I'm going to take my masks and multiply them by that. And then finally, I'm going to wire that into my normal. And so what you're going to see here in a minute is I'm going to get raindrops on the top and not on the bottom, which is really cool. Now you can see with all these masks, I've kind of toned down the strength of my normals. And if I want to kind of beef up how big these drops are, you can see how they're looking kind of flat. So what I'm gonna do is, is instead of multiplying by two and subtracting one, I'm gonna multiply by four and subtract two. And that should give me like a little bit beefier normals. So that's kind of a cool effect. And then last week we talked about making things look wet by increasing the smoothness. And so the very last thing that I'm gonna do in this effect is just create a little bit of roughness here. So I'm gonna take the mask that I created. Oh, before I do that, let's just take a look at this final mask. So I'm gonna pass my mask into um, the drops. So you can see I've got my static drops, my animated drops, and they're on the top, but not on the bottom. And that's pretty cool. Well, what I can do is I can add a, a one minus node to invert this mask and I can pass that in as my roughness. So now I've got drops that are a little bit more smooth. They start little, looking a little bit more like water. Um, and if I want to, I can adjust these a little bit with a power node. So I'm gonna add a power and I'm gonna raise this to a power of 
0 0.1. Actually, reverse that. I'm going to raise it to a power and then do the 1 minus. And that's going to be our roughness value. All right, pretty cool. So now we've got some drops that look like water. Nice. So I've got static drops. I've got animated drops. And my drops are looking kind of wet. So you can see if I took this and I combined this with what we did in last week's tutorial video, uh, I could get uh, raindrops and I could get surfaces that looked wet. And I can start combining these things uh, to create a really cool looking system. And so in a future video, we're, I'm going to show you how to do that, but not today. Right now, we're going to just call that good uh, with our animated raindrops. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, be sure to like, uh, and if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And to be sure that you get uh, to see the next one, uh, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.